was in this position before was a white male prosecutor. A white male prosecutor is going to be looking at the human being, you know, whose future is in front of him very differently than a black woman who is also a defense attorney, right? Who's done civil rights work, you know, and she ran specifically on the idea of, you know, money bail being a problem. Whether you get to go home, you know, while you get to prove your innocence, right? It shouldn't matter just that you can pay it or not, like whether you have enough money. Or any person being elected in a position like that means that people had to vote, right? Like she was actually number 97. That means like the election ballot was long in New Orleans, right? But you have to have, you know, probably done your research. And a lot of the times, you know, I in the not in the not so distant past, I probably did not know much about the judges on my ballots, right? Researching those issues, I think, is really important whenever you vote because, like that, voting someone like that right into a judgeship can really impact drivers of mass incarceration. The law isn't going to be for everybody, and that might be a surprising response. But you know, there are a lot of ways to make change, a lot of them, and I don't think that law school is necessarily the only one. I don't regret going to law school at all, and I'm really happy with what I do, and it's incredibly important. Figure out what works for you, right? Because like, again, organizing is incredibly important. I just know that I'm not an organizer, right? You you have to be willing to have the possibility that it might not happen in your lifetime. And that's also true for the law. Be open-minded, right? Like I thought I wanted to do immigration law, but then really it all kept coming back to racial justice for me. I drew a blank before about like why the law and like holding the line. I thought of a specific example. So we brought a lawsuit in West Philly after people were protesting following the death of George Floyd. And, you know, one of the few, one of the things that, that we have sued for, um, and some of my colleagues have sued in, in Louisville, right, for protests and in response to the killing of Breonna Taylor. And one of the things that we're seeking that's just basic is don't tear gas people. <laughs> you know, a war crime to use those things. Um, you're bringing lawsuits for things that should just be a given, right? Like don't shoot people with rubber bullets. Don't tear gas them, right? Like in order to continue fighting your, for your humanity, you just have to get, like you have to say, this is the line that we don't cross. And bringing attention to that and bringing attention to the fact that they had also tear gassed residents, just black residents in West Philly who weren't even protesting, they were in their home. Like there were some people who were inside trying to stay safe from COVID. The city council paid attention and they brought about change even faster than the lawsuit. The lawsuit is still ongoing. City council just two weeks ago banned the use of tear gas, right? And so it's the biggest city to have done so, so far. And that's the kind of thing that you can achieve. And again, it seems like so little, but the fact that that wasn't already on the books before, right? Like that's disturbing. We set the bar of like, we don't, we don't pass, go past this anymore. And then when they do, then you have that law. Then you immediately can go to the court and say, they violated this, right? Like, and that's how you also have, you have something that you can point to. There are innumerable policies made every year, um, just like throughout states and counties and like federal policy. Um, and you never, you don't really fully um, get to go back and reckon with older policies until you run into an issue like that. I just wanted to touch on this one quote that, that you said. I think this is going to be a quote for, for the episode, but um, voting to hold the line, to hold people accountable, and to vote people out. I love that. Perfectly encapsulates what we're talking about today. Um, and then vote and. So the and for me personally, um, this is my first year voting in an election. Um, I actually went out and I looked on Injustice Watch, which is an organization that um, at least in Chicago, went through and told voters like the records and the history of judges. And um, so that was really interesting to actually take part and kind of feel like I was also activating myself in the system. Um, but yeah, this was a super interesting conversation and I'm glad that we got to have it um, even so close to the election um, and the, the crazy week that we've just had. Uh, but I just wanted to thank you again, and I'm sure 
Chase, I, I will extend this. Thank you, but you can say yours as well. Um, thank you again so much for joining us on this episode. Kind of sort of activated. Where do we go from here? Now let's talk about some of the ways in which our KS fam can get involved and take action to really enfranchise more people and also to get involved in some of the issues that they really care about outside of electoral politics. Right, definitely. So there are so many ways to get involved. So please do not think that these are the only ways. A quick Google search will give you so many um, more opportunities and more ways to volunteer and and to help organize. But um, you can contribute to the Black Voters Matter Fund, um, which was, again, co-founded by Latasha Brown, Mm -hmm. um, which really was pushing to help get out the vote and encourage more Black voters to get registered and get out and activate their um, their rights and their rights of citizenship in this voting game. Also go to turbovote.com, which is a great online tool that helps you know when elections are occurring in your area, helps you register to vote in your state, and gives you great tips for coming up with a plan to vote. The ACLU Voting Rights Project um, is also another organization that is pushing to ensure that more people aren't able to vote and voter suppression and voter disenfranchisement are issues that continue to decrease in their effects in the United States. Mm -hmm. And then we also have in Wisconsin and Arizona, we know that in this past election, 2020, um, Native Americans, Indigenous peoples really came out and pushed those margins towards the Democrats. And some of the organizations that really worked to get out the vote in the indigenous peoples communities are nativevote.org, which um, works with the National Congress of American Indians. Um, It basically partners with coordinators throughout the country to revitalize civic engagement in Indian country. Tribes are America's first governments, and Native Vote works to ensure that all Native citizens participate in shaping the future of their communities. We also have the Indigenous Peoples Movement, which again works to get out the vote in their communities. And if you're right here in Chicago, um, you can also get involved with the nonprofit organization called Chicago Votes, which works to build a more inclusive democracy by putting the power in the hands of young Chicagoans. They're always taking volunteers, so be sure to check um, Chicago Votes out as well. And if electoral politics isn't your thing, there is also the Black Youth Project 100, which is a youth organization with chapters across the country focusing on community organizing, voter mobilization, and other social justice campaigns that work to secure the rights of Black, queer, and feminist initiatives. And if you're looking towards the prison system with a much more critical eye within the last year, um, you might also want to look into the Sentencing Project, the Equal Justice Initiative, and the Advancement Project, which all have areas that work to give voting rights back to the disenfranchised. So we're talking about ex-felons. We're talking about that voting population. Be sure to register to vote if you're in Georgia right now, because there is a runoff election and there's an opportunity for the Democrats to win the Senate back. So if you're registered, be sure to help out with the Get Out to Vote initiatives in Georgia. And if you're not registered, be sure to get registered and make a plan to vote in early January. Right. And we know that education is found everywhere, Um, not just in school. Some of the most essential learning is what you'll learn outside of class. So you can definitely take it upon yourself to learn as much as you can about your legislatures and what they're doing right and, frankly, what they're doing wrong. So you can hold them accountable. I know we talked with Liliana about voting to vote people out, vote people in, and make sure that people in elected office are taking responsibility for their actions. So it's very important to know who is leading your area, your region, and your country. Thank you, KS fam, for joining us on this episode of KSB, election season, and the voting game. Thank you to our wonderful guest, Liliana Zaragoza, who shared some insightful knowledge on voter suppression and the relationship 
between organizing and legislative power. Right. And be sure to follow KSB on all your social media platforms. We know you're on there. So just, you know, hit that hit that follow button at Kind of Sort of Brown on Instagram and Twitter. And be sure to follow Kind of, kind of Sort of Brown on Facebook as well. And while we recognize the importance of voting, it is also vital that we vote and also do work outside of electoral politics to bring about the necessary changes we want to see to end the systemic problems we are facing today. Join community organizations, educate yourself, and be sure to support the social movements being built at this very moment in any way you can. And last but not least, claim it. Claim everything, claim your life, claim whatever we've said in this video that resonates with you, just claim it. Thank you.